Hello, multi-tool uh, time still ticking over. Today we're looking at what I thought would be interesting is to get the probably most basic Leatherman that you can get. This is a Leatherman Bond. It's about $110 here in Australia uh, before shipping. And uh, it's pretty much the PST, the old first Leatherman PST. Uh, it's that same, you know, rough level of capability, even very similar tool set, uh, construction and whatnot. Uh, it's a, a, it's a non-locking Leatherman that's still sort of got that, uh, Leatherman quality, I suppose, to it. It's a, it's about the most basic and the most minimum money you can spend on Leatherman while still getting, you know, for all intents and purposes, a full sized, uh, normal Leatherman experience. So I thought I would compare this sort of $110 uh, bond to what you can get from your hardware store, which is in this example, a, a Kinchrome branded pocket tool kit, which as you can see has a very similar template uh, overall to the Leatherman bond. A lot of these um, you know, multi-tools made by the big brands, uh, big box stores are generally gonna be uh, Imitations, I suppose, of the original Leatherman PST or Super Tool. Uh, sometimes you see a couple of wave-like ones with outer opening features. And this one here cost me $36, to, you know, which I thought was a worthy amount of money to spend just for the sake of at least this review and this little interesting, I hope, comparison. So let's check out the differences between the Leatherman Bond and this King Chrome Pocket Toolkit. Is this worth almost four times as much money? Uh, let's get into it. So looking at this King Chrome Pocket Tool Kit, you're getting uh, 18 listed tools. Uh, you're getting a rough sort of butterfly opening style uh, folding pair of pliers. And uh, you're getting a lifetime uh, guarantee of some sort or another. So the King Chrome Lifetime Guarantee. I would not be certain how that would realistically go. And then on the back, you've got a you know, pretty garish nylon style uh, boxy sheath with a button clasp all comes in a, in a clamshell type package hanging on the hardware store shelf. Let's open it up. To be completely accurate, you would probably liken this to more of a super tool impersonation than a rebar bond PST size Leatherman tool impersonation. But, you know, you can see they definitely have the same design and uh, the intention is, is you know, there to basically make this, but for a whole lot cheaper, I suppose, and to have it so that, you know, maybe you can get a Leatherman without having to spend Leatherman money. So uh, let's uh, compare the overall tool and we'll compare the uh, internal tools as well and see how we go. All right, so quality wise, a lot of sort of warning markers are here uh, in that the whole thing is much more rickety and does not line up and doesn't really close particularly well. It's sort of rocky on its axis there just a little bit. The precision and assembly is nowhere near as neat. And that's simply just looking at the tool in its closed position from the outside. So the Leatherman is sort of tight. There's no rattle in it. Everything feels like it's pretty well, you know, held together. Uh, you, can, you can sort of move the arms a little bit if you want, but uh, overall it feels like a dense, tightly packed tool and feels, you know, quality in the hand. Uh, this King Chrome here, it's, uh, yeah, you just getting a lot of shake, a lot of rattle. It does not feel decisive in anything it does really uh, in terms of you know how it's all going together and how everything works. When you open up the pliers, they sort of just, this side's really stiff and hard and this side is almost like really, really easy and there isn't that, isn't that sort of detent that the Leatherman pliers have when you open them. They sort of go from this point here, there's like a grab where they snap in. You can even hear it. So you can, and that is good for when you're opening the pliers, you can sort of feel like you're not gonna accidentally go and shut them on yourself because there is a slight, um, you know, there's something here that the plier arm has to overcome to get into the uh, locked open position. It's not an overwhelming amount of force needed, but it's definitely something that stops it from feeling floppy or, and just makes it feel more of a sure tool in hand. Uh, this guy here, on this side here, it immediately starts to fold up and away and really doesn't seem to, to grab in any meaningful sense. So it's sort of just 
not free flopping, like it doesn't just, it, it's got enough tension in there because it's obviously been screwed down tight, but there's no other detent or anything like that. Whereas this arm here, this one feels gritty and awkward all the way open and shut. And no matter how well you shut it, it's just not quite all lining up. So overall initial quality impressions, much, much lower than the Leatherman. And this, you know, I'm probably not reaching too many conclusions you didn't predict in this video, but uh, it's always nice to have a bit of an indicator. If you are just shopping for a multi-tool and you're tempted to get something like this thinking it's gonna be anywhere near what a Leatherman is, is selling you, then uh, I, I hope to be able to show you pretty clearly uh, what the differences are gonna be. So neither of these multi-tools have locking tools. Leathermans are held with this same, very, very similar really, detent spring on the back of the, of the, the tool handle there. So uh, the Leatherman, however, goes and just applies pressure with this detent spring with a flat surface there to the backs of the tools. So you open up your screwdriver here, for example, swings around and it goes, click and the flat spring sort of fits, you know, tightly, but, you know, generously against the notch in the back of the tool. Uh, the lock on this King Chrome tool here, and say, say I'll open this file here, which is the first tool on the side. As you can see, the lock spring has more of a hook that fits definitively into the back of the tool, into like this little line that's marked there that it fits into. So that makes it basically a locking tool, but not quite. For it, in my opinion, for it to be considered a lock, it would have to have a means of unlocking as well, which it doesn't really, not a proper one. It feels like you're supposed to just be able to shut it closed, but you can't. You can't force that out of it just by trying to close the tool itself, right? So it's sort of stuck in there, albeit quite crookedly. So the way to l unlock this tool now is kind of silly, silly enough to open another tool and then have that spring kind of lever out and then you can shut that tool that you had open. So that's sort of how this one here uh, operates, which is not great for sure. Whereas the Leatherman just pops back. Even though it's not a locking tool, these tools all definitely feel like they're going to stay open for you. There's a nice detent there and you can you know, give them a little bit of a wobble before they start to shut on their own steam, but not to the point where they, they're jammed open you know, almost incorrectly. The good news for the King Chrome fans is you do get more tools on your, your King Chrome multi-tool. So we've got a file, you've got a bottle opener slash driver tool, you've got a, a flat driver there, you've got what I think is supposed to be an awl, which is not sharp at all. <laughs> Funny little pun there. And dull on both the side blade and on the tip. It's really, you can see that, what is that? Then you've got a knife blade, which comes not sharp and with the tip basically off already. And then you've got a saw, uh, which seems like they've at least tried to, to have a, 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 a taper down. So the blade should be th thicker than the, the spine, we'll see. And then you've got another little rounded off driver thing there, which maybe you could shove into a, a Phillips bit maybe in turn. Then you've got a 3D Phillips, which actually looks somewhat formed and not terrible. You've got a can opener and then you've got this serrated blade, which again feels very, very dull right there. So that's what you're getting on your King Chrome. You are technically getting more things in the handles of your King Chrome tool. Whereas on the Leatherman, you're getting, and that, you know, I don't love all these tools, for example. Uh, I'm not a huge file guy. I don't use a file on my multi tool a great deal, but this one is definitely, you know, it feels rough. It feels like a file on both sides. And it's got a little metal saw on the bottom. Compare it to this file on here. You've got a somewhat rough-ish feeling. It feels like a nail file on the cross-cut side, but then on the other side it is just almost just so smooth you can't even there's basically no drag running my finger up and down that file on this king chrome tool the drivers you see on the bond are properly sculpted they have nice defined tips and corners 
on them so they will actually stick in the screws and not slide out themselves when you turn them. So these two drivers here and of course the, the 3D driver are just night and day in terms of being well produced and well built uh, compared to the, the, the stuff on the King Chrome tool. The all obviously on this Leatherman you can see, yes that's a tip there, so it's actually quite sharp compared to the King Chrome's whatever that all is and the edge along the sides of the all for like reaming and for making the hole bigger is certainly an edge it's a defined squared off you know it's got a corner to it which is the start of a, of a ability to cut or you know separate material anyway uh, the knife blade is obviously a much nicer immediately sharp blade coming from Leatherman who used just basic 420 HC but this has got 2CR written on it in several places so I'm pretty sure this is a 2CR uh, MOV steel either the whole tool is made of it or maybe just the ply head I'm not sure but uh, the steel in these knives is going to be absolute rubbish steel uh, not the 420 HC is the best stuff but this is definitely a nice shaped blade with a defined tip hollow grind to it and it's going to cut for your basic multi-tool purposes sure there is only the one blade there isn't a separate serrated blade but uh, this is a blade that will actually cut rather than two blades that won't look overall this is not even worth you know a tenth of what this Leatherman is worth. This Leatherman is not just four times better than this tool, it is it is 10 times better than this tool here. And that's not because the Leatherman is so good, it's just that this is so bad. It is, um, it basically has no redeeming features on it apart from a Phillips that sort of um, will, you know, stick into a Phillips driver. And some pliers that will, I suppose, once they're open and, you know, being used, they will cut a bit of wire and they will, you know, do plier tasks. It's pretty hard to stuff that up once they're open. But the process of opening, the process of closing them, nowhere near as good. Just the obvious quality level, and I know it's only $36 for sure. The quality level is just not there. You can see it doesn't even fold into the handle properly. When things are closed, well, as close as it can get, it still sort of rocks back and forward open. The tools, they have a method of almost locking too hard open on what is supposed to just be a sprung, tensioned, you know, detented, uh, non-locking tool. They all stick open with the way that the spring is designed. Uh, this is just absolute hot garbage. And you know, you might say, oh, but it's only $36, but you're being a bit too harsh. It's like, but why even spend $36? This is worth like I would pay maybe $5 for this as a pair of emergency pliers, maybe, and everything else on it is just absolute rubbish. Um, and I remember being younger. I remember being a younger man um, when I was probably 18 or 19, and you don't really know much about how any of this works. And you see Leathermans, and you think, even back then, they were so expensive. I remember my first Leatherman Wave was about $130, and that was you know a lot of money back then. Uh, and I mean, they obviously doubled almost now. But I remember thinking, surely that's not that much better than the ones you see at a hardware store. Surely a hardware store, you know, I know I know King Chrome and, you know, DeWalt. There's all sorts of brands that put their names on tools like this that are just made in China. Uh, you know, I know that that's, um, you know, going to be okay. Surely it's sold in a, in a big box hardware store. And it's just really not. You cannot cut corners to this level and still have anything you'd be happy with at all. You'd, you'd go through two or three of these in a year. The stuff would just fail or just upset you or let you down. So always, you know, multi-tool, buy once, cry once. And you don't have to buy Leathermans. Even a Gerber multi-tool, um, even the ones like the suspensions and whatnot, they're going to be more well-assembled than these sort of... These I almost see as brandless. You can almost just see they've, they've bothered to etch the stainless steel 16 functions. You know, even the... What have we got here? Stainless 2CR, but they haven't bothered to etch in King Chrome. So this would obviously just be subbed out for whatever tool brand says, oh, we need a multi-tool type plier in our range. Let's just order that one and, and laser engrave, you know, whatever our brand is on there. So that's what's happened here. Uh, yeah, just really avoid these like the plague. If you want a basic Leatherman, save your money for a little bit and get a Bond. It's very basic. It's not the premium. It's definitely not the Rolls-Royce Leatherman, but it will do you know this job actually well enough to be a warranted purchase. This doesn't do any job well enough to be a warranted purchase, even at $36. You know, absolute garbage. And it's definitely deserving of the bin. So there you have it. Look, there aren't many more egregious cases of the 
the um, the snobbery being more justified than with multi-tools, especially multi-tools that are designed and sold to perhaps tempt you into, I'll just get this one, see if I like it instead of springing for a Leatherman. Uh, very few examples of tools have this much of a giant void between the two of them in quality. Even the Leatherman, Sidekick, Wingman, Rev, the sort of the ones I feel are the lesser Leatherman tools are so much further away from these. They're so much closer to this than they are you know, close to this, even something like a Gerber suspension or a SOG, you know, the, the Chinese made uh, knife or gear company multi-tools are just so far better than this. Um, Gerber suspension, you'll probably pay an extra $20 over this and it will be a three times better tool. This is easily 10 to 15 times better than this and it costs, you know, four times as much. There is really no debate at all. There is absolutely everything wrong with this one. And you know, as long as you're happy with a, a limited Leatherman, like the smaller, more basic Leatherman, there's really not much wrong with this one at all, as long as you know what you're kind of getting into. So absolute trash, and you know what we do to absolute trash around here? It goes on all sides of the bin. That also unlocks the tool pretty well.